Hello and welcome to Cycling Weekly's Tech of the Month and Happy New Year guys, it's January, brand new year, new year, new you. Oh not, definitely, not, not new, new year though. No, I'll stay no. the same. Okay, yeah, yeah sure. absolutely the same. You're looking and the same. Always, as always, we are going to bring some brand new products to you guys and Rupert, you're going to go first? I'll go first. New because year. it really is new, new year. New year, new me. Yeah. I've brought a uh, new indoor training device. Ooh. <laughs> this is new year, new Rupert. Oh, I've, not I've not started the gym yet. Oh, so, right, uh, okay. Here it is. Um, distinctively elite. It's very exciting, this, actually, and I'll tell you for why. Um, only costs £450. And cheapest direct drive turbo on definitely market? up there yeah so 450 pounds for a direct drive smart turbo trainer that's really good which is quite remarkable isn't yeah, it really yeah. considering that it was only a couple of years ago that these things were like 1200 quid yeah easy. Like across the board yeah and there was only three models on the market mm. and they all cost above a grand and now we're in this amazing place where we've got multiple models all sitting around the 500 pound mark yeah. which is pretty cool mm. um and so I'll tell you some headline stats, shall I, about this. For, so for 450 quid, um, it can simulate 12% slopes. It can have an accuracy of plus or minus 3%, which isn't as accurate as the top of the range models. But then but it's you, half the price. Half the price. Yeah. And that's also like accuracy isn't all that important as long as you're always using this to train on. So it's kind of, you can forgive it for... Um, for a slightly lower price. And then there's also the max power output of 1,350 watts, which is fine. I mean, I'm never hitting 1,350 watts. This guy? This guy might. Yeah, yeah, I probably would, watt but you know, it's every now and again. Yeah. But for the majority of your training, you're never going to get anywhere close no. to that, are you? So for my riding, something like this would be absolutely perfect. When I say my riding, I mean my indoor riding, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. Um, and it's, all of those figures sort of like are right in my ballpark of training, um, just for when I put them around on Zwift and do like some efforts, some of their built uh, training programs and stuff like that. All of that would be, this would be perfectly suited to that. But as you say, it's good to see the price coming down. Yes, it's still quite an expensive bit of kit, but you know, a lot of people are priced out of the smart turbo world, um, or at least, you know, using the platforms like Zwift or Sufferfest properly with all, with all the yeah. sort of compatibility elements and having a good experience with that. But it's good that the price is coming down because it, it means it's accessible to more It's really people. good. It's definitely, that was definitely the case with direct drive turbos, like you say. Um, they were always the most expensive with the obvious benefits of being it's more like riding outside. Mm. Um, it's more accurate to the ride feel because you've not got that wheel slipping on the roller like you would have had in days gone. So this one has all uh, the resistance adjustment that you can have with like sort of Zwift and yep. all the other things? Yeah, so it has ANT Plus, as you'd expect, Bluetooth Smart protocols. Um, so you compare it to Zwift, Trainer Road, Elite's own software because Elite do also have a companion app which you can pair to the Turbo to look at its settings and data and um, you can calibrate it via that or you can calibrate it on the third party softwares that you're using for training. Um, it also has, and this is really cool, it has this thing called a power meter link. Okay. So this is so having said that plus or minus three percent isn't as accurate as some other turbos. Well, power meter link means you can link your turbo to your power meter on your bike. So say you have like a any any type of power meter, pedal meter, pedal power meter, or crank based power meter, and your turbo actually just reads that. If you think that's more accurate than this, yeah. you can just swap in your own power meter for the turbo's one. So, so this still has a power meter. This still has in. a power meter in it. Um, but you can swap in your bike's power meter should you need. And it has adapters available for, uh, so right now on one side, that's just quick, a quick release, quick release yeah. but you can also have through axles, um, 10 and 12 mil, uh, including for 142 mils, 12 mil, 135 mil hubs. Mm. It's also a boost adapter that you can get if you so have a mountain bike, mountain bikes, or even some gravel bikes now, which yep. are coming with yep. boost. You can get that, so that's 148 mil by 12 mil. Um, it comes with a 9, 10, and 11 speed Shimano and SRAM free hub body. Um, you can buy a Campag one separately. You can also buy a SRAM 12 speed XD and XDR should you need um, to do that. So I'll just finish off with a quick um, price comparison. Uh, the Tax Flux S, which is their lower range yep. model, 
uh, that comes in at £550. So this is kind of coming in at the lower end of even the more value options on the market yes. now as well. Yeah, that's um, good. So that is the Elite Zumo. £450 direct trainer. Amazing. Thanks, Rip. Get, get that out. Shake yeah. it off, shall I? Get it out. Sorry. Keep pushing. Whoa. Thank you, Rupert. James Bracey. We're going to go on to you. Yes. Well, I'm going to just dig into my lovely little bag here. Oh, I thought your pack lunch was in there. Yeah. Oh. It is as well. Oh, yeah. 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 It's a little school bag. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to look in this box here, okay? It's lovely packaging. Some lovely little things. It could be my sandwiches, <laughs> but it's not. It's a saddle. Yeah, don't try and eat that. No, this is uh, quite substantial, a really. Tough. Yeah. So this is Brooks C17 Cambium saddle. I'm very jealous that you have this. Yeah. I, I love the look of that saddle. I think it's an amazing looking saddle. One yeah. of the best on the market, I reckon. Yeah. And it's also one of the most comfortable. So I've not ridden one of these for a couple of years, but when I did ride one of them, I was just blown away with how something so simple can be so comfortable you know it's almost like it takes away the uh like the body geometry style sort of like bike fit and everything having all the cutouts and everything else like that it goes back to basics and ends up with something that actually is a very lovely place to perch your bottom um but there's a reason why i've got this even though it's not brand new it's because brooks have just brought out two new color schemes so two new colorways in a lot of their products especially in the c17 and funnily enough in a couple of the bags Ooh, as well so nice bag. we have what they call orange it's funny it's funny looking yeah, orange. isn't it it's you. You sure um, they don't call it like burn orange i know or yeah sunset it's brown. funny isn't it they literally just call it orange or you have then octane blue there we go yes yeah, so yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly so a little bit of facts about the saddle if you don't know about brooks so brooks are renowned for the beautifully crafted leather saddles that look like they've come off, off a bike from the 1800s. The, the ones you have to wear in. Yeah, those are the ones you have to break in. So they're quite basically uncomfortable to start off with. Um, actually, for quite a while, they're quite <laughs> uncomfortable. But then... 1,200 miles. Yeah. If you, uh, if you give yourself you know, enough time, then they do break in and they get softer and they're lovely. Um, well, what they've done here is they've basically brought out a range of saddles that rather than having a leather base, they've got a natural rubber base. So they don't need breaking in. So they're instantly as soft as they can be and instantly as comfortable as they can be as well. The shaping is the same as the classic B17, which is the most popular saddle in Brooks range still to this day. Really? Okay. So this has a all weather nylon cover so rather than it being made of leather, it means it can be left out. You can ride wherever like that and it'll be absolutely fine. But it's got the same sort of styling. So with the rivets and the shaping as that B17. And, and it's really good for anything from your touring, commuting, to even like put on your race bike. The rails on this particular one are not the lightest. The whole head, it is, it's nearly 500 grams. Wow. So for all your races out there where, you know, we're, we're looking at saddles that if they weigh over 200 grams, you kind of like thinking that's quite heavy. Yeah. But it's not about the weight with Brooks, it's is not it? It's about never the been weight. about the weight. No, no. That potentially is a saddle that will last a lifetime. Price-wise, so the Brooks saddles, again, because they're all handmade, they're not the cheapest of saddles. The standard colour schemes of the C17 are $94.99. Um, this particular one in the special edition colour schemes, 102.99 for the saddle. Uh, thanks, James. I'm going to go next, and I have brought a little cycle computer. And no, oh. it's not a Garmin. No, it's not a Wahoo. It's a Brighton. And so this one is the Rider 420. Um, so if you look at a Garmin 20 or 25, uh, they're around the 120, 130 pounds for the 25, I think, roughly. Um, and for the for the the 20, you, you didn't really get connectivity, um, you definitely didn't get GPS, um, and there's a few things missing to make the sort of higher end units a bit more attractive. But this has everything you need, there's nothing they've skimped on this. Um, it even has mapping, albeit breadcrumb fed, um, so you get a little line on the screen. Um, but it has 77 different functions. 77, right, okay, name them. Yeah, go. Go on. <laughs> speed. Right. Distance. Yeah. Average speed. Yeah. Average distance. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we could be here sometime. <laughs> um, but it does your usual speed, cadence, heart rate, and power. This has AMP Plus and Bluetooth 
uh, smart as well, so it's connect to your devices. Obviously, it needs that to read your power meter, uh, power meter reading. For a unit that is 109.99, uh, it's pretty good. For that price, you do just get the head unit, and you get your stem, yeah, yeah. stem yeah. mount. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, you can buy a bundle for 164.99, I think it is, which gives you cadence and various other sensors. Um, heart rate strap, etc., to go with that unit. So that's sort of bumping the price up a bit. Um, but for, the, you know, its own little unit, which is, you know, a 2.3 inch display, um, and you can get up to eight pages of um, data screens okay. uh, if you wanted, which is kind of all rivaling the, the other two main sort of brands yeah. for the GPS units. So and then there's a few other little key details. Um, it is quite, lightweight, it's 67 grams. Um, it will uh, read your smartphone notifications um, for you and display them on screen, um, which you can't do with all your uh, Garmin devices, it, especially the smaller ones you can with the, you know, 1030 or whatever. Um, but again, more pricey. Um, and it has 35 hour battery life. That's uh, really good. It is good. Mm. We're gonna move swiftly now onto Bike of the Month, and it's slightly unusual this month, James. Why is that? It is, because we have an e-bike. Woohoo! Yeah. I just thought that was a big 750 I millimeter I thought that was somewhere bottle. where you put your sandwiches, yeah. Um, no. This is really fun, because obviously in last month's Tech of the Months and Bike yes. of the Months, we had an extremely expensive e-bike. We did. And this month's, we have balanced that extremely well with this bike. So this is the Carrera Crossroad Electric, and yeah, £999.99. That's sub so £1,000. Sub £1,000 e-bike. It had to happen. We are living yeah. it now, boys. Yeah, this is it. What this is the future. Alive, eh? This is the future. And yeah, it's, yeah, okay. There's, there's no getting away from the fact that there's bits about it that are definitely on the budget scale, but. It weighs the size of a small moon, for example. It's about 19 kilos. It has yeah. its own gravitational pull. It does, yeah. It it's, does. It's pulling in. I would love you to talk to me about the battery motor specs yep. um, for a bike sub 1,000 pounds. Okay. Because that is obviously, in its design, it's a very big battery. Uh, what are the numbers? So it might look like a big battery compared to some of the other e-bike or road e-bikes we've seen recently. But when you look at the majority of e-bikes, so hybrids and mountain bikes, this is actually fairly standard. So what we've got is we've got a Suntour motor and battery system. So it might not have the same sort of clout as Bosch or you know, Bros, the, the ones that we've seen a lot of, but this is a really, really good unit. So battery is removable. So it means if you do lock it up and everything, you can take that with you or for charging it, you can take it in the house, which is another thing like, you know, at least with that, you can just take the battery in the house. Whereas with the, all the others, you have to take the, the actual whole bike, don't you? So, so this is a, it's a 312 watt hour battery um, com coupled with like the standard 250 watt motor. So it's supposed to have a range of up to 40 miles. So it's pretty decent and you can get a, an upgraded or a bigger battery system, which is about 418 watt hours available to buy afterwards. So if you want to just up how far you go, that's what you got. And this is the Suntour HESC motor system. Okay, so it's the, actually the most premium one they do. So rather than having like a cadence based sensor to tell it when to actually sort of start putting in power you've actually got a torque sensor in the bottom bracket in the crank so it actually uses your power so it's actually pretty sophisticated mm. and that's the same system as you get on like the specialized creo we had last month mm. and the villa and all the other top end e-bikes it's the same tech this, this bike is, is clearly way too big for me but i yeah. had a little jump on uh, just before we came in <laughs> yeah. and it flies like it, you're not getting any less power no, um, no. or even quality of power really like mm. for the less money like the system is good. It's, it's, really good it's a really good system it's a reliable system and it's been around for quite a while it's just obviously something that we've not seen mm. in roads stuff because it's a little bit heavier and you know they, it's it's not as sophisticated or as sleek as some of the but other it's systems built quite the bike as a whole is built you know quite robustly isn't it yeah like, you look been, at the chunky tires it's not yeah. it's not quite you know, your, your Sunday 
you know, super fast bike, is it? It's, no, it's definitely no. a, a more of a mixed mixed bag. Yeah, this is a bike that's definitely sort of suited for a variety of riding, commuting, you know, occasional sort of off-road rides if you want to go on that. It can do pretty much everything. And yeah, it's been built with a bit of, you know, conscious of budget as well. So it's a full aluminium frame and fork. Um, there's loads of little really cool features on it. So you've got drop seat stays. So it's, it, they've, Carrera have actually tried to make it as comfortable as possible. Uh, relatively tall head tube as well. So again, it's a good position you've got in this. So the drivetrain is, is a mix of Shimano with a, a Sierra nine speed. So you've got a Sierra um, sort of derailleur at the back there. And then it's micro shift shifters and brake levers. So this is a brand that has actually been doing group sets for quite a long time. A very long time. But yeah. you don't tend to see them a lot on sort of premium models really. But uh, it, they work, they work really, really well. It's a single chain ring on the front, so that's less to go wrong, less it to think about. That. that looks great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think we should bring back that type of chain guard, you, you know? Yeah, it's well, great. It's good because it does then appeal to the commuter as well, because it means then, you know, it is relatively enclosed, so... The chain's not gonna fall off that, is it? No, exactly. no, it's not. So the Carrera is a Halfords brand, right? That's right, yeah, so, so it's... 999 or 999 pounds, that is firmly in... Cycle to work. Cycle to work. Absolutely. It's territory, isn't it? It's a, what, that, again, is one of the key reasons for this bike to exist. It's, you know, we're in that cycle to work territory. So this is a bike we can see more and more people buying. It's got recognised brand tyres on here. You've got strong wheels. It's, it's a bike that you can just use every day. Great. Well, thanks, guys. Um, I think that wraps us up for Tech of the Month and Bike of the Month. It's been um, relatively budget friendly. Tech of the month, yes. might I add. Uh, and if you've enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe to the Cycling Weekly YouTube channel and click the notification bell as well whilst you're there to make sure you see all the updates and releases of our latest content. But until next time, we'll see you then. Take it a month! Did I get intro? Done. Yeah, perfect mate. End that there. Lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> James Bracey got a bag of coal. I got coal and clementines. <laughs> bag of coal, a bag of coal.